Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to look at the gradient of a scalar in a slightly different way. Here we're going to see what we can also do with the scale with the gradient and it turns out that the gradient is the vector. Remember the gradient is indeed a vector that will give the change in the scalar when it is dotted with the displacement. What does that really mean? Well again let's say we have a scalar field right here. It's a two-dimensional field. We have the lines representing constant values for the scalar field. And here we, at this location right here, we've drawn, we've drawn the gradient of that scalar field. And notice that this is a vector quantity. It has magnitude and it has direction. Now notice we don't have a little arrow on top of the gradient of U. It's understood to be a vector. Sometimes it's confusing. I like to put little arrows on top just to make sure that everybody knows, hey, this is a vector quantity. The gradient of a scalar is a vector. But now what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we make a small change in the, in the location. We're going to draw a small vector ds in this particular location and we want to know how much the scalar quantity will change as we move in that direction a very small, small amount, small ds. Well, it turns out that by definition, the change in the scalar function can be defined as the dot product or the scalar product between the displacement vector and the gradient of the scalar quantity. Again, we're going to take the same value as before. u is equal to 2y squared minus x, like in the previous example. We're trying to find du, the change in the scalar quantity, by making a small excursion from our original point to a different point, a small ds away. So when we dot this, we get the following. This is equal to a small dx in the x direction plus a small dy in the y direction plus a small dz in the z direction. So this represents the small change in position, the small displacement, and we're going to do the dot product or the scalar product with the gradient, and the gradient of u can be defined as the x direction times the parcel of u with respect to x plus the y unit vector with the parcel of u with respect to y plus the unit z vector times the parcel of u with respect to z. Now what we could do here is we could say well the dot product or the scalar product is the magnitude of ds times the magnitude of the gradient of u times the cosine of the angle between them. Here's the angle theta be the cosine of the angle between them. And right away you then realize, hey, if the angle is equal to 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 degrees, well, that's equal to zero. So that means that the u doesn't change if I travel in the direction perpendicular or at 90 degrees with the gradient, which makes sense because the gradient is always perpendicular to the line that represents constant value for u. And therefore, if I travel in the direction at 90 degrees with the gradient, I expect that you should then not, uh, you sh uh, should then not change. You will stay constant if I travel small uh, distance in that direction perpendicular or at 90 degrees with the gradient. But we're not going to use that equation. What we're going to do instead is we're going to find the dot product or the scalar product by multiplying the component of x here times the component of x here, the component of y times the component of y and so forth. In other words, this then becomes equal to the partial of u with respect to x times dx plus the partial of u with respect to y times dy plus the partial of u with respect to z times dz. This is the dot product and all we have to do is find the partial of u with respect to x, the partial of u with respect to y, and the partial of u with respect to z. If u is equal to this, then we can say that this must be equal to the partial of u with respect to x well, this will be 0, this will be minus 1, that becomes minus 1 times the dx plus the partial of u with respect to y would be 4 times y times dy minus the partial of u with respect to z that is equal to 0 times dz, so we don't have a, whoop, we don't have a z component. And then finally we can say that the change in the scalar field du is now found to be minus dx plus 4y dy. What that means then is, if I find the values for x, y, and z, notice only one value matters, the value in the y direction. 
So if I find the value in the y direction, which is right here, if I put this on an xy coordinate system, this is my y direction, this is my x direction, I find my y coordinate right there of that particular point, and I plug it in here, multiply times 4, and then I multiply that times the change in y. I make a small change in the y direction, I multiply that times that, and then I make a small change in the x direction, multiply that times minus 1, and that will give me the value change in the scalar field u. Pretty neat, so to find du for any position and any change in the, d, in the x and the y direction, I can calculate that using this equation. Again, use, we were able to find that equation by taking the gradient and multiplying it via the dot product or scalar product with a small displacement ds. And there's another way in which we can use the, the gradient of a scalar to find some interesting things when we do electricity magnetism at a more advanced level. And that's why we need this kind of mathematics.